really nice. Yeah. So when pastor looks nice, it must be a special day. <laughs> Something is going on that day. <laughs> what time is it now? Turn to the person next to you. What time is it now? It's time to be united. <laughs> Ecclesiastes, well, chapter 3, verses 1 through, uh, 1 through 3 says this. It says, There is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, a time to build, and so on, until all the way to verse 8. It is a very important to ask this question that what do I need to do now? Right? And as a church of Jesus Christ, it is a time for us to make a very important decision today. So, last Sunday, Pastor Jonathan Parker shared his message on becoming one church. And because it is so important that both of us agree that I will have my opportunity to share this message. So I will elaborate more on the verses I read last Sunday if you remember what I read. <laughs> and the Pastor Parker also quoted that same passage in his message, and I guess the great people think alike. You know? So my message today is not just on why we want to be together, but how. Today's passage that I'm going to read will tell us what we need to do to make that happen. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Okay. It says here, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing one another, with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Everyone says, Amen to that. So let's ask the first question that we need to ask. Why do we want to do this? Why do we want that? Three. I always go three, right? <laughs> Hopefully that helps to us to remember. The three reasons. The first is to respond to God's calling. And second is to practice God, Jesus' love. And third reason is to give glory to God. Is it hard? I hope you remember that. Why we want to do this together? To respond to God's calling and to practice Jesus' love and to give glory to God. The first is to respond to God's calling. Right? So Paul is challenging the church of Ephesus today. And starting with verse 1, as a prisoner for the Lord, as a prisoner for the Lord, Paul is writing this letter to church in Ephesus from the prison in Rome, just like he was writing a letter to church in Philippi, same way. He says, I'm in the prison because of the gospel, then I urge you to live a life worthy of calling you have received. The calling that you have received, and when you go to verse 4, it says, as you are called and when you are called. Jesus, I mean, Paul just said up three different times about your calling. Are you called by Jesus? Okay, work with me. Are you called by Jesus? I don't want the people watching online think I'm just doing by myself. <laughs> but most people don't agree. They say, oh, wait a minute, calling? Isn't that for the pastors? Isn't that for the missionaries? The pastors, the missionaries, they all said, yeah, I have called from God. No, every Christian are called by Jesus. Every one of us. Jesus did not just come to die for us, but he came to call each and every one of us. The reason we can accept the gospel, the reason we can understand the gospel is because he called us. And he also called us to live our life according to that calling. So we have to think about that call constantly as a Christian. Why did Jesus call me? Can you answer that? Why did Jesus call me to come to this church? You have to ask that question of that calling. I know why Jesus called me. Clearly, that Jesus wants me to be a bridge 
between the English speaking ministry and Korean speaking ministry. Ever since I started my ministry, that this is my call. Whether I was in Korean church before, I was in bridge between English speaking and Korean speaking ministry. So when we started New Horizon 15 years ago, there was our vision in the bilingual church. Anybody who can speak English, anybody who can speak Korean, of course, we are welcome to come. Unfortunately, I only can speak two languages. This is how we started. But I have no idea that God had a vision of the English speaking ministry. It's beyond. It's much bigger than just the husband of Korean wives or second generation Koreans. You know, God's vision is always much bigger than ours. And I experience it each and every single day. So you have to ask yourself, what is the vision for JBC now and going forward? What is the vision for NHCC now and going forward? What is the, your calling from God? Why did God put us together close to 10 years? Because everything has a purpose. And I truly believe it's to church. That God started that vision. Did God allow us, me together, just to share this facility for 10 years? Verse 4. It said, there is one body and one spirit. That is the goal. We believe in one spirit. And we are one body of Christ. And if we are not one body yet, we need to become one body of Jesus Christ. And that is what the leaders of both congregations believed and agreed. And that is why you're hearing in this. And you're in place to share your thoughts. Now, today's verse also tells us not just why, but what do we need to do to make that happen? That is very important. It's not just, oh, I'll do it. No, we have to understand what we are getting into, what we need. And two things for each of them, two, that what the Paul is telling us is, first, for us to be able to respond to God's calling, if you understand that calling, you have to do your best. You cannot do just a halfway. Verse 3 says, make every effort. The other translation, yes, he says, be eager to do that. Make every effort. I look back in about 10 years of our history together, and I truly believe that we did our best. NHC did their best. JBC did their best. We did our best to be a good neighborhood. Now, God is challenging us not just stay in the good neighborhood, but to become a good family. This next step. If you date for somebody for 10 years, Would you wait for, like, what's the next step? Are you going to keep on dating? For us to respond to God's calling, we need to make every effort to be able to move forward. What does God want us to do? Not just stay in the same place, but we need to be better. And what God desires is not just to be good neighbors, but it's a wonderful family. That's what we believe. And challenge is to you and me. Are you willing? Are you willing to do that? For us to keep the unity and keep it, that we need to make every effort. Are you willing to do your best first? For us to respond to God's calling, we need to do our best. And I ask myself that question, have you done your best? I try to respond to God's calling. Second is to be patient. Verse 2, it says, be patient in the middle. If you follow this, anything is underlined? Do you see that? Do you? Yes? Then you can see that. Because I'm picking out here. Okay, I'm not going to do one by one. So be patient. For us to respond to God's calling, we have to be patient because we don't know God's time. And it's definitely not us doing it. It's God who's doing it. I know you heard that patience is a virtue. And you're looking back, the patience is the name of the game that we did. The elders and JBC and I met together by ourselves more than six months. I don't know, close to maybe a year or so. I don't know how long. But for a long time before I introduced to become coming to this church, to our congregation. And I'm sure JBC the same way. 
before we decide to move forward to the idea of a ministry together, we spend hours together. And then it's been 10 years since we came. You know, next April is our 10-year anniversary. So we've been together for 10 years before we move, we decide to move forward. And leaders of both congregations spent about eight months or nine months together before we present this to our congregation. Talk about patience. We waited. We waited. And see when God wants us to do. But you know what? The vision did not just start eight months ago when we started talking. Vision did not start a few years ago. He started 10 years ago when I met Pastor Terry. And when I talked to him about renting or sharing the facility for the worship place, Pastor Terry told me, I don't want to rent our building. But if we want to do ministry together, I'm willing. That's how it started. Was that Pastor Terry's vision? Was that my vision? No, I believe it was God's calling. And we've been waiting patiently. And we believe it is time for us to move forward. Are you willing? For us to respond to God's calling, we have to do our best, and we have to be able to be patient to take one step at a time. Even after we decide to become one, things are not going to change overnight. People say, oh, what's going to happen? What are you going to do? Well, be patient. Turn to the person next year. Be patient. It takes a 10 months before baby's born. I didn't ask Jessica. As soon as she told me, Dad, I'm pregnant. Okay, I want to see baby's face. Right now. Be patient. You have to wait 10 months. For us to become truly the family who can understand and work together as family, it would take time. We're just taking first step. And we have to do our best to make that happen. That is why I'm asking today, are you willing? Because that's what Jesus, God asked me 10 years ago. When Pastor Terry told me, yes, we can do ministry together. But there's only one senior pastor. God asked me, are you willing? My answer is yes, and that is why we're here. We are doing this to respond to God's calling. Because I knew my calling. My calling is to, to be a bridge of any group. Second is to practice Jesus' love. See, we talk about Jesus' love all the time, right? We teach, we learn about Jesus' love constantly, so much. But do we really practice Jesus' love? You might tell me, oh, yeah, Pastor... Yeah, I practice in Jesus' love. Yes, maybe two people closer to you. Two people who are comfortable to you. It's a lot easier to love people who have the same background, same culture, same interest, and they're speaking the same language. It's a lot easier. But that is not what Jesus commanded. Jesus said, go to the world. Go to the world. You know what? Jesus asked disciples to go to the world. You don't even have to go to the world because many times Jesus brings the world to us. We are just not comfortable with that. The world came to us. If you go to Annandale, there's a people come from like, I don't know, maybe 50 different, 100 different countries are scattered together. The world is here. For us to become together, it's just a little piece of that. And Paul is telling us today, do you want to practice Jesus' love? Yes. Then you got to do two things. Today's verse tells, first one is to be humble. For us to practice Jesus' love, you have to be humble. Verse 2 says, be completely humble and gentle. Not occasionally humble. Not whenever we want to. No, completely humble and gentle. What does humble mean, by the way? Humble means that you consider the interests of others more than you. That's being humble. You consider the interests 
of others more than you. You consider the interest of God more than yours. And that is being humble. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find the rest for your soul. Jesus called himself gentle and humble. And Paul said today, you need to be humble and gentle. He just flipped that. The Paul is asking us to have a mind of Christ. We have to be like Jesus for us to practice his love. Why do we want to be together? So we can practice Jesus' love. See, when we don't think about our gain, I know people ask, why do you want to be together? What do you gain by doing that? JBC might ask that question. NAC might ask that question. What will you gain by doing that? Our answer is, it's not our gain. It's God's gain. When church is getting bigger and spiritually mature, it's not our gain. It's God's gain. The whole thing started because we believe it's God who's gaining for us to doing this. So question to you. Are you willing to have the attitude of humbleness? We consider the interest of God more than ours. And second, Paul says, accept each other. For us to be able to practice Jesus' love, not only we have to be humble and gentle, but we have to accept each other. Verse 2, and it says, bearing with one another in love. Bearing each other. Bearing one another. We have to be able to accept each other's differences. Because we are different. Pastor Jonathan and I are different. We don't think exactly the same way. You probably heard many months past nine months. We don't speak the same way. Our style is different. But we decide to accept each other's differences and know how to work together. You know why Jesus called 12 disciples who are very different from each other? I believe it is very intentional. Jesus did not call 12 disciples who can love each other very easily, who share the same thoughts, same values, and same backgrounds. Oh, you're 12, already your family, let's be together. No, Jesus brought people from different backgrounds, different interests. They really didn't like each other. And that is why Jesus said, John chapter 13, verse 35, he says, By this, everyone will know that you are my disciple if you love one another, right? We read this so simple, so lightly. Oh, yeah, of course, you love each other. People are going to look at you and know that you belong to Christ. No, because it's not easy for them to love each other. So I kind of translate this way. The world will know that you are my disciple if you can love each other. If you can love each other, the people you're not supposed to love each other because you're not together. And even if, if those people can love each other because of Jesus, then they will know that you must belong to me. So why we want to become one family? Not just nice, good neighbor? So we can practice the love of Jesus Christ. We've been showing the love to each other as good neighbors, I'm sure. And now Jesus is asking, can you go beyond that? Can you consider each other as one family? Are you willing? Lastly, why do you want to do this? To give glory to God. How can we give glory to God? We talk about glory to God all the time. It's not like, yes, this is for God's glory. We give glory to God when we praise. How can we give glory to God when we have hope in God? 
when we have hope in God, God will be glorified. When we say, Lord, Lord, it's not us who are doing, doing this. It's you are doing it. We cannot do it by ourselves. You are the only one who can help us. That is when God will be glorified. Verse 4, he says, call to one hope. We are called to have one hope, hope in God. We have hope in God's power, God's plan, God's provision, God's protection. It's God that who we trust. And that is why Paul says, verse 6, is the one God, Father of all, is over all, and through all, and in all. Father of all, he is the creator of all. Not only he created all, but he's in it, he's controlling it, he's managing it, he's working together with them, who is overall and through all, in all. He is everything. We are just a part of him. That's powerful God that we believe. So when we depend on God, then God will be glorified. So we truly believe it's not what we want, it's what God wants. It's not what we are doing, but it's what God is doing. We put our hope in God, who guides us all this time, who started it. And it just started 15 years ago. We have no idea why. JBC started 182 years ago. None of us were there. <laughs> we are little. Our thought is a little. But I try to look very long. Unfortunately, I cannot really see far in advance. But I can look back and see, wow, this is what God has done. Just in my life or beyond, 182 years ago, when this church was planted, who knew? The 182 years later, the multiple people from multiple na nations will come together and worship God like this. Can you imagine 180 years ago, people together have any thought? Because nobody even exists at the time. These are all people from England or Europe and all there. They couldn't even see, probably never saw anybody in Asia or Africa, any place like that. So they might not be able to see that future. We should be able to see the fact, the back, past, history. Wow. I always look at it that way. It's not self-centered. It's just see what God is doing. And I'm just part of it. The God started to make this. Who knows what's going to happen later on, what God has planned. But one thing for sure, that other leaders of the church stand before God saying, Lord, this is what you want us to do. We are depending on you. We don't know what every each individual congregation is thinking, desiring. But if this is what you want, and you're the one who spoke to us, we pray that we all share the same thought. How can we give glory to God? When we depend on God. The last one, when we become one. Verse 3 says, to keep the unity of the Spirit. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit. It says the unity of the Spirit. The unity did not start from people. It came from Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is bringing the unity among people. That is why becoming one, having unity... Keep the unity is what God desires. It continues, verse 4, 5, 6. It's a one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God. You now, Jesus came to this world and died and resurrected that he could bring the unity between people and God. And not only that, he could bring the unity among people. This is what God desired to see. This is what Jesus desired to see. So when we become one, that God will be glorified. I truly believe that. John chapter 17, verse 21. One of the last words of Jesus, the prayer to God the Father. That all of them may be one. 
Father, just as you are in me and I, in, I am in you, may there also be in you so that the world may believe that you have sent me. How the world will be able to see that Jesus came from God? How will the world be able to see that Jesus brought the salvation to people when yeah. his people become one? When Jesus' people become one, then the world will know that Jesus was sent by God. And then verse 22, it says, I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. Are we one? That is a question. That is a challenge. We've been together. Well, it's a worship place for like nine months now. Does worship, worshiping, is worshiping God just make us one? It looks like we're in the same place. But do you believe and experience it? Hey, this is my brother in Christ sitting next to me. Or he's just my good neighbor. God will be glorified when Jesus' members love each other as a family. God will be glorified when NHS members love each other as a family. But God will be even more glorified if NHC and JBC members to be able to love each other as family. And that is what we believe. And to make that happen, God studied the church 180 years, 30 years ago. To make that happen, God called the pastor Jonathan Parker. To make that happen, God called me. Now, to make that happen, God called you. What is your calling? Why, did you, that, why do we decide to become one? Can you say it with me? Three. What is the first one? To respond to God's calling. Second, to practice Jesus' love. Third, to give, to give glory to God. I'm hoping and praying that we all agree on what we desire to do. And if that happens, if anybody out there, they ask question, because once we decide, and once approved, announcements will go out. Korean newspaper will see who we are. And they're going to ask, why did you become one? To respond to God's calling. To practice Jesus' love. And to give glory to God. So you all can be united also. So you all can be united also. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for giving this opportunity to be able to worship you and praise you and share your words. We are making a very important decision for our future, for both JBC and NHCC, being together for close to 10 years. But Lord, you are challenging us today. Don't stop where you are. Go next step to show the whole world that what true love of Christ is and how the people who have different background, different language, different culture can become one family. Help us not to just stop being a good neighbor, but truly become the family of Jesus Christ that will love you more than anything in the whole world and love each other like ourselves. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.